Good evening, everybody. <laughs> the, the few, the proud. Come on and stand to your feet. We're going to sing, Lord, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. We're reminding ourselves of the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Yeah. Lord, you are good. Yeah.
Lord, sit canoe. You are righteous, this Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're El Shaddai. And you're Adonai. And we adore you. Come on, just begin to worship him. Just begin to put worship in the atmosphere. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence that's living in me. This is my God. This is. Jesus. 
Jesus. This is the I breathe in myself. Yes, upon you tonight, Jesus. Our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon you. We have our eyes upon your face. Yes, was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by you, Jesus. You came and brought us grace. And you give more grace. You give more grace. We receive more grace. Rest in your love, Jesus. We are here to go seek We rest in your love, Jesus. There is none like you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for a double portion of your glory. Double portion of your glory. Thank you, Jesus given us your Holy Spirit who lives inside of us 24 hours a day. You said you would give us a helper who would never leave us. Ooh, so he fills us with your peace and he fills us with your joy supernatural. He fills us with your love, with your holiness, your righteousness. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing left for us to do but reign. <laughs> reign now in this life. And we say, yes, Jesus, open up our eyes of spiritual understanding so we can see clearly the vision and the mission that you've given to us, your children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Praise him for the mission. Yeah, go ahead. Praise him for the mission. Praise him for the mission. Praise him for the mission. It's the most important thing we can do in this earth. Woo! It's embrace his mission. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We declare we see the mission. We see it. Our eyes of spiritual understanding are open. We declare we see it. We see it. And we will obey it. We will obey it in the name of Jesus. Yes, we will obey it. Because you said go into all the world. Preach the gospel and make disciples. Woo! Nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us. And we go rejoicing. Carrying out your mission, Jesus. <laughs> now we thank you for everything you're doing in our midst tonight. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Good evening. 
Amen. Are you ready to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords this evening with your tithes and offerings? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I want to share this scripture with you. Very familiar. Um, coming out of Matthew chapter um, 14. Matthew chapter 14. Uh, I will ask that you would just, just write this down. Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. The Holy Spirit showed me something in this verse. And it reads out of the King James Version, and it says, And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up, un, up into heaven, he blessed them and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. So I'm, um, I'm reading this verse, and I see myself there looking at Jesus. Now, Jesus took the five loaves and two fish. Now, just imagine this. He took five loaves and two fish. He takes it, and he blesses it. He start giving it to the disciples. Now I see myself. I'm standing here. I don't know if the disciples were so busy because they were just getting it from Jesus and distributing, but I'm standing here and I'm looking at Jesus' hands. And it's actually the the bread and the fish are multiplying in his hands. As he as he gives it to the disciples. And I'm looking. And then I, I, and I can just see him. He turns and looks at me and said. And he smiles and he said. These things and greater things shall you do. Now you, so so I, I want this to manifest in my life. So I'm so that's why I ask you to just write it down and and and, and then read it and reread it and then meditate on it and then pray in the spirit and then reread it some more because this the seed won't work without the revelation and the revelation won't work without sowing the seed. So just imagine yourself when you bring your tithes and your offerings before Jesus and you worship him with it. At that point, your hands are blessed. From that point, everything that you touch should multiply. So just imagine you have this to pay and you have that to pay, but, but it's, it, it just keep multiplying in your hands. And you want to bless this person, but it just keep multiplying in your hands. I'm not there yet. So when I, when I seen that and I heard what the Holy Spirit spoke to me, I said, I got to get that. So that's going to take some work. You, you're going to have to. Read it and reread it, meditate on it, pray in the spirit until that becomes just like when Jesus, it would just, mul it would just multiply in his hands. He, it would just, I, I, and I, I see that for you, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. So praise God. So amen. So, so work that, work it, work the word. Work the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I keep hearing the Holy Spirit say, work the word. Hallelujah. And that revelation was in that scripture all these years. I, I never seen it until the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. So praise God. Uh, are you ready to give tonight? 
those that are watching us online, if you want to text your giving, you can text your giving to Heritage KY to the number that you see on the screen. You can mail your giving in to the address that you on the screen or download the church app, give on the church app, or you can um, or you can go to the church website and give on the church website. So no matter how you give, God sees and you will bless. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you with our tithes and offerings, we lift them up before you right now. We say that our hands are blessed. And everything that touches our hands multiply. A never-ending supply. In Jesus' name, amen. You may come forth and give. crowd this evening. Praise Jesus. And we're going to break up into our groups in, in just a moment. Uh, but I just wanted to just talk for a few moments, uh, something that the Lord has laid on my heart. In a minute, we're going to show some slides, and uh, you may want to take some pictures of those. But first, let me just ask, how many people have gotten to go see the movie, Jesus Revolution? Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, let's talk about that for just a moment. Uh, John Irwin is the director, the producer, and he's also the person who produced uh, Woodlawn, the movie about uh, how the Jesus Revolution impacted racism in Birmingham, Alabama. They did a fabulous job with, with that movie. So let's talk about the Jesus, Jesus Revolution movie. Uh, was the movie what you expected it to be? Was it what you expected it to be? We're going to probably need some microphones so everybody kind of... Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Okay, who wants to speak first? Was it what you thought it would be, or what was the experience like for you? Why, why not? Did you like it? Okay, well, that's a good, easy question. Okay. All right, all right, we'll start with you liked it. Uh, which character in the movie? stood out to you the most, and why? Just raise your hand, they'll get a microphone to you. Which character stood out to you the most, and why? Here's a hand. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to say, uh, I think it was the actual pastor's daughter. Okay. Um, and I say that only because in this generation, I feel like that's what we need to watch out for, um, that generation. Because as you can see, she was trying to trying to distance herself from the mm. church and her father mm -hmm. until you know she got drawn back in with the the new community. So okay, yeah, she stuck. Good, there. I can't remember her name now. Okay, <laughs> who else? What a character that stood out to you? Right here, Roger. Oh, here's one over here, Roger. Go ahead, Katina, and then we'll come to Roger. And why? I would say for me, Pastor, it would be Kathy because when they were in, when all, when they was doing the drugs, and she, when she seen her sister hit the floor, it was like you could see like something just clicked, and that really just shook her. And so when she um, met Greg again, and it was just like, no, yeah. you know, she didn't want anything else to do with that lifestyle. Yeah. And but it was like she started. Not knowing what she was searching for then, but that was like her wake-up call right yeah. there. That's good. That's good. Raj? For me, it would be pastor because he had to have a change mindset, the denominationalism, uh, traditionalism, and because the church was dying. 
Yeah. His so, church so let me ask this question. Uh, what, what was the pastor's problem? In the beginning, what was the problem? He was, um, they told him pretty much how to pastor the church. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But then he got a revelation and, and the church grew and exploded. Exploded. Yeah. Any others? Character right here. Yeah. Two right there. I'm going to say Greg. Okay. Because Greg was following, he was doing something with his mom, then he would start following the crowd, and then even though it was like once he got saved and knew what was going on, people would try to tell him no, mm -hmm. and he kind of like backed up, but after they gave him the revelation that they saw him over the, over a big old crowd, yeah, he, you know, he let go. He didn't, he didn't try to fight it anymore. That's, that's good. That's interesting. Yes. I would say uh, Greg, too, but I'd also say the band in the film, uh, Love Song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I went. You uh, hippies. <laughs> I never heard that music before, but had I heard it back then, I think I would have listened to it. Mm. Because, I mean, it, they were doing, they were doing everything that the world was doing as far as the sound of the music, but their message was just straight Jesus, and yeah. I went so far back as I watched a Praise the Lord episode from 83 that had the band in it, and they were talking about how far down they were in the drugs, and uh, it was 10 years after, so 83, and uh, Mike McIntosh, just a whole bunch uh -huh. of people, Greg Laurie, they all came out of that, and it was just amazing yeah. to hear how close to death they were, but the Lord pulled them right out of it. Yay, Jesus. And he still uses them. And he's still using them. There was a hand back there, way back in the back. Go ahead. Yes, Pastor, I would say uh, Greg as well because um, Greg had a past. Uh, uh, he, he, he had a, a, well, an absent father, okay? Yeah. And uh, then when Greg began to follow the prophet that came in town, when the prophet left, then Greg felt as though he was being left out again. Uh. And uh, But the part that stuck to me is when him and his mother was in the vehicle, and they was leaving, and uh, he asked her again, when is dad coming back? Uh -huh. And she finally told him he's not. And so when she said that, I knew his what his response would be, mm. and it just brought, my, brought me back to what I've heard you say as well as I've heard others say. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Because the young lady who he was really in love with, I say he was still in love with her, but because he was hurt, from yeah. his past, from his father, as well as the prophet that had left. So I think that was powerful. Yeah. Mr. Kozar has one. There's one in the back here. Do I have a hand right here? Right here. Right. Oh, three hands over here. Okay, go ahead. I say Greg as well because um, in my life right now, I'm just trying to find my purpose and Yeah, sing that song. <laughs> me personally, I did that to my mom every night before I can go to sleep. I had to make sure she got a song before she could sleep. But her song was Alabama Ball. Oh, wow. So I made sure I sung that every night to her. So, yeah. Wow, that is so good. Mr. Kozart? Yes, sir. Um, so I was um, touched when the wife, the pastor's wife, she made two statements that I got out of the film. And the first one was... Um, she was, talk, she was talking to her husband both times. And the first one, she said, you know, the truth is quiet. Yeah. Oh, wow. But, you know, the lies are loud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, so I was, I was, that really caught me in the stuff in the family. You know, had me start thinking about a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And then the second time was when they was in the tent. And I guess um, the uh, Logan, what's his name? Lonnie. Lonnie. He was getting ready to leave. And Pastor, he was, he was a he was like, man, I'm gonna lose the church oh, and yeah, stuff, right? Yeah. And um, she was like, why are you so arrogant to think that God, you know, God is gonna move. This is yeah. God moving. It's not about yeah. you. <laughs> so I thought those two things that, is that, good. She, that she said um, was kind of, you know, had me like thinking about it and stuff last night. That's good. Over this way. Okay, I say the, the pastor too. 
because once he got the revelation that stopped judging a book by its cover and he allowed people to come in as they are, other people that was looking at the young people coming in that was judging, he stopped looking at what they was looking at and he gave them love from what God gave him love. And so uh-huh. when they came in with the multitude and the man came in looking funny and what <laughs> got me was when he told the young man, sit next to that man right there. <laughs> and that right there just gave me so much sense of humor because people judge you not knowing what you carry because of how you look on the outside. Wow, okay, all right, good. What uh, surpri- uh, what I like about the pastor is that uh, he washed everybody's feet. Wasn't that something? Oh, when, come on. When that they was, was good. coming into the church. Surprise. And that remind me of when Jesus' feet uh-huh. was washed. Okay. And that I'm like, whoa, that is beautiful. And he said that he washed everybody. And when he looked at the guy and the guy looked at him, <laughs> he was upset. And he was like, what? <laughs> But that caught my eye more than anything when he washed everybody's feet. <laughs> yes, he kind of scared of exactly what I was trying to say. How many people were judging them to wash everybody's clothes? Because yeah. And also, when he got up that morning, he was getting ready to pick them out. But remember, <laughs> when he sit here and this year and put his his crown went to a thick cloud, and he had no shoes. That's um, good. Also, when um, his name is Greg, when they was in the tent. leaving because he had felt that he didn't um, felt that feeling before and he was scared that he wasn't going to get it. How did he know it was real? But she went after him and told him that they can do it together. Yeah. And a lot of times people need somebody who can do it together because they're scared to do it by themselves. That's so good and that we be a family because there are a lot of people that are afraid. What, what was he afraid of? What was Greg afraid of? Being abandoned again, right? Right? People leaving him. And people are going to come through the doors with that same kind of fear. And that's why it's important that we love people and we be a family for them. Okay, where are we? Oh, right here. <laughs> where, where is that? Oh, okay, go, go, go. So for me, um, I, I don't remember the pastor's daughter name, but one of the things that stuck out with me with her was how in the beginning it seemed like she was possibly rejecting, you know, because she was bored and, her, you know, she was rejecting God, but what it was, she just needed to, she still loved Christ. She just needed to somebody to meet her where she was, okay. to worship yeah. him, to, you know, in a way that she could relate to. And she just became the worship leader, yeah. just watching her playing, you know, and singing and everything. So that was the thing. We just sometimes have to, you know, everybody worship in their own way. So yeah. you, you can't force people to worship the way you think they should, and you don't judge them because they don't worship the way you think yeah. they should. that's good. One or two more. Go, go ahead. Good evening, Pastor. Mine was Greg's feet. Um, they just took him in and showed him a lot of love. Yeah. And then they brought him in the car. He said, you call me a cop? <laughs> they said, yeah, we want you to go see your girlfriend. You know that's love. <laughs> <laughs> and then they prayed on the car. I said, that's <laughs> <laughs> So the one thing that I got out of the whole movie is I thought there was a lot of sheep without a shepherd. Wow. They needed a shepherd. They were just out there loose doing whatever they wanted to do. They knew about love, but they didn't know about the God kind of love. Wow. And they needed a shepherd. Good word. And, and you know that word that Jesus spoke that, he said that they were like sheep without a shepherd. That is an ever-going word. It's, it was good then, and it's good now. Go ahead, one more. I don't think he was named, but um, when the pastor gave everybody the opportunity to stay or leave, mm-hmm. um, and then that one man and his wife left, <laughs> it was the old man that went to the other side for me. Because <laughs> it's, it's so easy to say, you know, we have that Christ love and loving others, but really displaying that love and showing, like, well, I'm going to go sit with Widowed them. It, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm going to go sit with them. That's good. Let me, let me ask this question. Why, why did Lonnie leave? Why did Lonnie go to Florida? Some thoughts on that. So kind of get a couple of those, and then I have to run quickly. His time was like, was up. He did what God asked him to do, but he okay. was like resisting to not, he wasn't ready. He was like, when he was around the fire, outside in the fire, he said, God, I'm not ready. Use me, use me, Lord, use me. But he was like basically fighting him not 
leaving, but his time was really up because he did what he was supposed to do. Okay, okay. Y'all have microphones? Okay, one over here. Keep your hands up so they can see where the microphones go. Yes, it's also with Lonnie. He, he went through a rough childhood. I've been following the whole family. I mean, I've been listening to Pastor Chuck Smith since we were stationed in Hawaii, you know, so I kind of know a little bit. But Lonnie Smith, I mean, he had a rough childhood. And when he went off, when he was on LSD, he was reading the Bible. So he was getting, I, I guess, all these illusions and stuff like that, you know. But God used him to be able to talk to Pastor Chuck Smith to have that, that he was able to touch those type of people because he had the type of experience that they went through. So he kind of know where they were coming from. And I think God used him to help to help get a lot of people out of the stuff, you know, to bring them to somebody that can teach them and help them the God of word, you know, to, to yeah. teach them about him, you know. But he also, he fell back later on again. He, I guess, whatever he was going Say through. Say that last part again, he what? He fell back again yeah. to whatever he was going through. He just, it, he just couldn't hold on for, for some reason, you know. He just... Everything that he went through, he, it just brought him back again. So he fell back into the life style that he was living before. Yeah. This is after, after he left from California, Florida. Then later he fell back. Uh, yeah. Uh, let me say something about that. Um, that God, and somewhere I'm going to talk about this. God uses imperfect people. And uh, that, that's kind of the story behind the story. Like, like you were saying, Lonnie, he, he died of AIDS. Um, and it was really a tragic, tragic death. The same person, but he drifted back. And, and as a team, as a family, as a church, you got to, when people come, you know, I, I just want to, I don't want to make the, I think Chuck made a mistake there, uh, kind of, making Lonnie feel a little rejected. So I, I don't know how I would do it because I've, I've rejected people before and I, know, I don't know how they ended up. But, uh, but we, want to, we want to embrace the vision that God has for people, what he sees in people. And if we can, we want to walk them through their struggles until they get to the other side. I think Chuck Smith said something like, uh, he may have put him up, up front too fast. Uh, okay, I can, I can see that. Uh, uh, so we, gotta, we just got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit as we're, we are molding people. That's, each one of you is going to be molding somebody. That's why you're here. You're here to become a disciple maker. And people are going to come, like, like she said, uh, Lonnie had a whole lot of things in his past. There are going to be a whole lot of people that will come to you and God's going to use you to launch them into their destiny. So, so be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Okay, one more, and then I got, got where am I? Right over um, here. I was, where is that? Oh, right here. I was actually on that Okay, scene, two more. Um, that you were talking about, because I, I felt like um, he felt that the rawness and nakedness of who he was started to be revealed. Yeah. And I felt the same way. I felt bad from the standpoint, I know that, Probably you were in the movie, we were like, okay, he's getting a little heady and he's kind of thinking it's about him. But I started to see his vulnerableness um, because he was, he, he did, he didn't, he wanted people to feel like I'm the voice and, yeah. and, and you guys. And I felt that that same way. I was like, wow, I wish that that could have been handled yeah. in a different way. I, I just felt bad with, for him when that happened. Yeah. Well, well, go ahead. I, um, I saw somebody right in here, you, at your hand up. Okay, somebody get a microphone to that person, too. So just like she said, it was like more of a, he blew up too fast. And yeah. it was, it got out of him. And he was looking at himself and not God, but he was also moving by God. And so I feel like pride kind of like made him angry because he felt like they was taking him from a position. Where yeah. he should have just sat down, not really sat down, but more... Uh, mentor the young man yeah. into that role. So that's what I need y'all to look at, how you mentor people when they get, when they get like that. When they get like that. Yes, ma'am. 
I was kind of on the same page. I kind of wrote a lot of scriptures down about some things that I, that I noticed. But um, the Bible warns us not to put young believers or new believers in leadership too mm-hmm. fast, mm-hmm. lest they become prideful. Yeah. And I think that became, because God moved him so fast and so energetically and yeah. so powerfully, he began to see more of himself and thinking that he was the only source through which God could do his work. And then the pastor was not wise enough to sit him down and say, listen, son, yeah. you know, yes, God is using you, but we can never think that it's about us and that we're the only source of God. Just like Saul took his anointing off of, like of God took his anointing off of Saul and put it on David. Yeah. You can walk in a position, but not be anointed anymore. And so we have to be careful yeah. to help people understand that it's never about us. Yeah, that's good. All right. That's so good. Okay. Okay, good, good. We're going to go on. This was, this was, <laughs> this, this was so powerful. Thank you all for sharing. And uh, again, I, I'm praying for you all and the people that you're going to be discipling. All of the things that they have been through, all of the hurt, you're going to be so anointed that you're going to be able to help them grow out of it and shine. And this, this was for me. Uh, going to uh, l- that week, last week, w- going to Asbury to the revival and then seeing the Jesus revolution was w- w- what I'm going to call, and I've said this before, a kairos time for me. And kairos is a Greek word for time. And I want to just talk to you for a few minutes and we're going to look at some slides here in, in just a minute. There are several Greek words for, for time, which are translated time in English. So let's, let's look at the slides. Let's look at this. Okay. So when you get born again, this is kind of like a time. You just, from the time you get saved to the time you get heaven, time, go to heaven, time is passing. Next slide. And chronos is that logical time. Chronos is the word for time like, you, like you, you keep it on your watch or on your phone or on your clock. That, that's the kind of time chronos is, step-by-step time. Next slide. So chronos means sequential time, the kind of time that you find on your watch. Next slide. Okay, now there's another word for for time, kairos. Kairos is another Greek word for time. And see, along your lifetime, along that that time span there is from salvation to heaven, you're going to have a lot of kairos moments, a lot of kairos times. And these are going to be times, next slide. These are times when something happens that causes you to turn towards God and find help or growth through his word. So it's, it's a Greek word that means an event, an opportunity, an appointed time when something changes because it's the right time. Okay? That's a Kairos time. And, and going to the movie and, and going over to Asbury just made this kind of, a, I'm, I'm just in one of those moments myself. It's like a Kairos time for me. Next slide. Okay, now in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, you don't have to turn there, but you you see it there on the slide. It says, the time, Jesus said, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the gospel. Okay, so that word time right there is kairos. It's, It's not just sequential time, but this is an appointed time. This is a special time where God is breaking into your chronos time to bring the kingdom. And the key words that we're going to look at is repent and believe. Because repent and believe is how we enter in to new levels in the kingdom. Next slide. Okay. Kairos, Mark 1.15. Next slide. Okay, so here we go. Whenever we have a Kairos moment, whenever we have uh, either revelation from God or wor- something from the word, or maybe you're out in the, in the, in the field somewhere and, you, and a butterfly buys flies by and and suddenly God's speaking to you, whatever it is, the two steps then are repent, that's what Jesus said, repent and believe because the kingdom of heaven is right here. Something's happening, God is knocking on your door, and the way that you open that door is you repent and you believe. We repent because God is up here and I'm down here and all I got to do is change my way of thinking. That's why God said, your ways are not my ways, your thoughts are not my thoughts. And he says, let the unrighteous man change his thoughts. So 
Repentance is how I enter into the door, into the door to the next level of whatever it is God is trying to bring into my life. Repent and believe. Okay. So when we talk about repenting, these are the things that we're looking at doing. Okay. Number one is observe. Okay. Why? What am I doing? What? What am I feeling? What am I doing? What am I saying? I see something happening. How, why am I reacting? How am I reacting to what I'm seeing or what's happening around me? Then reflect. Reflect means, okay, why am I doing it? Okay, I see how I'm reacting. Now I'm asking, why am I, why am I cussing? I ain't cussed in 50 years. Why, why am I acting like this? Why am I, why am I angry? A lot of times we just get angry and we don't even ask why. Why am I doing this? Why am I eating so much? Why am I sleeping so much? Why am I, why am I drinking all of a sudden? Why am I so reflecting? And, and here's the key thing that for, for believers, remember what Pastor Janie says. Run it by the word. So when you're reflecting, you need to ask yourself, is my action in line with the word? Is what I'm feeling in line with the word? Is, is, is what I'm planning to do to them, is that in line with the word? Okay. That's, that's what you're reflecting on. Okay. Then the next one, you want to discuss it. It's important then to bring somebody else into your, into your reflection. Okay. Because a lot of times we reflect and we can, we can kind of make things up for ourselves as we go along. So you need somebody. That's why everybody needs the body. You need your group or somebody, some one person that you trust to discuss what's going on, what you think God is speaking to you. So you observe, you observe, you reflect, and you discuss. So that's the repenting side. Next side, next slide. So now you're going to go into believing. So you go from observe, reflect, discuss, and now you're going to make a plan. You're going to plan how you're going to do better. Okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to drink that anymore. I'm not going to, I'm making a plan that I'm going to read my Bible now. I'm making a plan. I'm going to forgive. Okay, you're making a plan, a course of action that lines up with the word. You run your actions by the word or your feelings or whatever it is. You ran it by the word. Now you're making a plan to say this is what we're gonna, I'm going to do different. Ne next, now this is where a lot of Christians stop, okay. I'm going to do better, okay. I'm going to quit. Drink. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. And they never do. Okay, and this is where Jesus said that uh, your good ground, he said, the sower sows the word, some fell on good ground, and it produced some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. So some of us, we're getting like 30 fold out of the word, but this is how you're going to go up to 60 and 100 fold of the word. And one of the keys is accountability. Everybody say accountability. So when you let somebody know what you've been struggling with, and what you're planning to do, you let somebody else know about your plan. Guess what? Your, your ability to get it done will go a whole lot higher. Okay? But as long as you just kind of secretly plan to do it, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. It will probably be next 20 years. So accountability adds jets, adds jets to your, to your, to your rocket. Okay? And then next thing, you act. Okay? All right. Everybody got this? All right, next slide. 